you know, we all have this thing constantly. It's a good topic of conversation, that yeah. fact that we're all at varying stages and degrees of um, perceptiveness or awareness, maybe. Openness or whatever, yeah. yeah I, I almost said openness, but I, <laughs> it's not even really that. I think it's, it's our awareness mm -hmm. and our ability to... Comprehend the message? I, I guess so. Sort I of thing? Really, yeah, I don't really know. And maybe this is part of the bigger conversation. The things that shape us. Mm -hmm. That's it. The things that shape us. Our connection with spirit. Like I dug a hole in the yard, up in the barnyard and covered over it with boards. But, uh, and I don't think grandpa knew it for a long time. I was digging a hole and wanted to see how deep I could get. I got to a point where it was deep enough that uh, it was as deep as I was tall. And I could lay in the bottom of this hole and look up at the uh, sky in the daytime and uh, could see the odd star. So I, I, uh, I put boards around the outside of the hole or to shelter it from getting sun on the edges that were cut. So they weren't, they were now being shaded instead of lit by the sunshine. And I could see stars in the daytime because it, there was no light pollution. It was a little thing in science that was kind of cool, I thought. Interesting. I didn't go to the barnyard very often because Laddie scared me. Um, <clears throat> I'd only go up to, you know, put the compost on the rhubarb pile or the in the compost pile behind the rhubarbs. But not, I mean, I have some memories of being in the barnyard, but mostly being in the backyard. I remember perfecting my three-point turn, but that it wasn't on the property. I ride my tricycle <laughs> from our front porch up the street, and right before buy and store property, you remember that there was that fence. There was a tiny little two-tile sidewalk up to a step, and then nothing beyond that. I think a house used to be there, but there was a two-tile and then a step up. Yeah. And I would pull my tricycle in there, and I backed it up towards the store, and I went right on home again. And Because I was only allowed to go up to the store and back again, and no further. But that's where I perfected my three-point turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. It yeah. was right beside Byam's store. Yeah. There was a, a fenced-in yard that was completely enclosed. Yeah. There were peacocks oh. in there. Yeah. For there a while, people. there were peacocks in there yeah. for a while. I remember that. I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. And that yard um, sparked my imagination for uh, the secret garden Ooh. story. Remember that? Ooh. Do you remember the story of the secret garden? Well, I know this, the famous story, the secret garden. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember thinking that could be the secret garden mm. because it was all enclosed. You couldn't see past the, the hedge or whatever it was. Yeah. But yeah, it was all very secretive and secluded. And yeah. It, it was. It was like a little cubby hole that no yeah. one could hardly tell. Yeah. Didn't, wasn't there somebody who lived in there? Was yeah, the Lions lived in there. He lived on the property, yeah. Yeah. They had, they had like a coop in the back. Yeah. It was attached to the to the Brian's house, and then was the store was on the other side. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty sure it was all one building. Uh, could have been. The biggest thing I think I remember about about uh, growing up in Tyrone just before we left was was uh, that uh, social worker that came out because mom was afraid that Randy and I were going to kill each other or something. You talked about that in the, in the welcome. 
episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you told that story. Yeah. Because okay. I think that really started opening the door. <clears throat> so where did I, that lead you? I think just a, an awareness. I think that was the beginning of the awareness and, and uh, just the uh, the realization that that there's something else going on at the same time that these things were happening I guess. and to me it was for myself of course but um, it, what do you mean by that yeah I'm working on it okay. <laughs> It's uh, it's an awareness that that we're being looked after somehow. You know, we may not have known it or been able to voice it back then because I don't think it's going on. But at the same time, um, I think it came, it became more obvious, or it started to become more obvious from then on for me. I I believe. Um, it was a slow process because, frankly, I didn't believe in this stuff. That didn't help. And it doesn't change the truth. <laughs> but uh, it, it, uh, it did exist. It, it's, it's, I, I don't understand how exactly it works that way, but it, it's, like a, it's like that seed of growth, you know? It, it just, I guess that incident planted that seed for me and, and for me um, that possibility just kept growing and growing and growing. Um, when, I'm, when I'm trying to think of ideas, I try to clear my, clear my brain and try not to think of things and just go to this still place. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's there that uh, where where I seem to have access to all this other stuff. Yeah. Until you're at that still place, which doesn't have it doesn't have ego. It doesn't have the burden of money. It doesn't have all these other restrictions that you know that our normal life has, and all those things keep you out of meditation because they stand in the way. And if you get rid of them and you're still and open and you know in the right light uh, if you go into that still place yeah the balance will automatically balance itself i guess mm -hmm. uh, but it's people's pride that they allow it to stop them from going there yeah. <laughs> you know yeah it's uh yeah it's funny and and yet when you go there you don't have to do anything no Everything that falls into place happens effortlessly. And yeah. Things just drop into place and, and just yeah. witnessing it is just amazing. Amazing. Um, you know, back when I was mixed up with these other people out west, it was uh I, I couldn't believe the things that were happening, you know. It's just unbelievable. Um, you know, we were having uh, the RCMP, we're seeing one thing that wasn't there. Um, we got pulled over by the cops. It's like, uh, it was weird because they, they, they read two different license plates and wrote them down and both cops wrote it down. I could see both their handbooks laying on the front seat between them and see that while well, one was at one car, the other was at the other. And they wrote down their license plates numbers first and then second. And the one was the reverse of the other because they were at the other car first, right? So, um, but the two license plates matched, like this one matched that one and this one matched this one. Yet neither one of those license plates were on our car. Neither one. And they both came back valid. No problem. Weird. Weird. Oh yeah, try to explain that to somebody. It's just, and when we believed in this, uh, you know, just center yourself. Don't uh, just be there and uh, have faith. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's pretty neat. You know, just because you're making mistakes doesn't mean you're not gonna not gonna grow at all, right? Uh, oh, mistakes are important. That's, yeah. that's the thing that we that's how you fail. grow. Yeah, that's how you grow. That's right. Exactly. That's one of the things I think that one of the big lessons that we missed out on because we were taught that mistakes are to be ashamed of and avoided. And that when you make a mistake, you were in trouble. When you make a mistake, you were in trouble. Oh, I heard you. <laughs> okay. I didn't get that same sense. You didn't? No. I mean, yeah, uh, some mistakes, but some mistakes I felt were legitimate errors in judgment and I have learned this and I will know net better next time I learn from this yes my mistakes true. have have helped me be who I am Absolutely. and who I was at the time I have honestly with everything I have zero regrets ever me too yeah. me too you know, because everything, all my, you know, poor choices led me somewhere that I needed to be at that time to have whatever experience that I had. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, I, I would do it over again. Yeah, yeah. You know? <clears throat> You Me can't, too. Be, can't be afraid of making mistakes. No. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> What's that, Rob? So you can't be afraid of making mistakes. Right. So how, how did you grow up with that sense, Debbie? And then I have this other sense that mistakes are not okay. It's a Maybe my maybe the maybe the quality of my mistakes were morally different than the quality of your mistakes. Maybe maybe there there is a different um, lesson level of lesson there. Like we talked about in an earlier episode, you have sort of been this integrated person who has this sense of things and you know you don't really have to get enmeshed in the seeking of meaning in order to embrace the experience yeah what do you do (laughs) what what do you do pretend No, but like even with dad, like Debbie, Debbie and I have always had the same kind of instinct to stay separate. Yeah. And Debbie has, you know, I've wrestled with my decision to do that. And, and Debbie's always had this very clear uh, ownership. And, and I've always felt blown around by obligation social obligation my social expectation actually you know what it means to be a good daughter too late Uh, i never bought into any of that though i know i never bought into any of that i mean good daughter what's that yeah you know i can be the best person that i am right but I never thought, does that make me a good daughter or not? See, I never thought about it until I was wrestling with my feelings around dad. And that didn't happen until I was in my 30s. <clears throat> yeah. I was really, you know, I was clear about how I felt and what my expectations were and where I stood with it all. And then I think when I had kids, it all kind of got rattled a little Mm -hmm. bit. And Mm -hmm. 
I started questioning and seeking and trying to figure it out and then tried to reconcile a couple of times. Yeah. And, you know, that didn't go well. But there was always this expectation, I think, that um, that dad, uh, you know, expected more and I was never able to give. And, and, and so somehow I have allowed his um, uh, point of view to have importance. I don't know how. <laughs> you know, it's weird. It's like on one hand, I, I feel completely detached. And on the other hand, I feel completely attached. Crazy paradigm. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we're like, anyway, I it's 1130. You want to wrap it up? I'm feeling like we, we should start wrapping it up. Yeah. Oh, good talking, dears. <laughs> Not that fast, eh? <laughs> I think uh, I was going to say something. I can't remember. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I think I think some people in this world are screwed up in their way they the way they think. And some of those people are parents, and I think our dad was one of those people. So I, I see it. I see his uh, problems for what they were for him. How they affect me is up to me. Um, and you know, that's I guess that's why I came to terms with it because I wanted to try to do what I could about bringing the relationship back together again somehow. So I did what I could, and and uh, I'm happy with it. And mm -hmm. You yeah. should be. Uh, For you. We, um, I never thought I had a bad relationship with Dad. Not really. But I think there was a point when... I kind of saw him for what I thought he was. Um, and that was brought home by whoever it was that made that comment at David and Carmen's barbecue. You know, there's good old Uncle Al at it again. <laughs> it was like, yeah, that's it. But my relationship really didn't go south until him and Barb had some kind of argument or some kind of falling out. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's when Barb were in, was in her 30s. And I suddenly got disowned because I was being lumped in as one of the girls, you know? And it's like, oh, okay, that's how we're going to play it now? That's fine. And that never changed, you know? But, I mean, I saw him for what he was. He was just he was truly an actor you know he was never real yeah yeah that's the way i saw it too for the longest yeah i was okay with that for the longest time <laughs> i hated what he was putting you and randy through yeah me too toying with your emotions and playing off them and manipulating them and it was like no no yeah. no, no, no yeah yeah i didn't like that either and and i uh, one of the things that I, I remember was trying to bring that um, up and always, you guys always defending that because you didn't really see it for yourself. Oh, I knew. I knew. Yeah. You know, well, as an adult, I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, and it didn't matter if he thought he was manipulating me or not. I knew what I was doing and uh, I knew why I was doing it, not because I was being manipulated. Yeah. But I can see how other people would see that as uh, 
abusive, you know, and, and taking advantage of his kids and, you know, to do all this work for him or whatever. And Well, it was just, it was just very self-centered. He was only like in it for him. It wasn't, it wasn't even the work because I know you guys loved it and you loved being up there and you loved being together and, you know, it was just, and then to like not even offer the cottage, you know, to dangle it in front of you guys as an inheritance all your lives and then oh, yeah. not even yeah. offer yeah. it. No. Wow. Nice touch. <laughs> what? Nice touch, Dad. Yeah, I know. Like that's that's you know, and and in the end, like what I feel like what he the last prank he fucking pulled on me he was just like, holy fuck. That really just showed me who he was. His last what? So his last prank. Just, you know, not wanting me to know and sort of, you know, putting kind of putting Rob in the middle, um, you know, because Rob knew that he was sick and dying and he didn't want me to know. And then, oh. and then, and then refusing for me to even come to the service. Like, yeah. Yeah. But th that wasn't a you, honey. That was an us. The girls. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Debbie, honestly, I- No, 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 don't be I sorry. Felt, I thought, but you know, I feel, I feel slightly responsible in a way because I, I felt like, like I'm, I'm hearing today for the first time that, um, you know, some of your detachment wasn't necessarily yours, that you were bucked in with it because of me. No, so, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, sorry to- uh, put that on you. My relationship was whole was threadbare. I was yeah. holding on by half a thread, and that realization cut that. Yeah. No, and for that I will thank you. Yeah. Because I was that helped me release, and I keep remember. I don't know what you were doing at the time in your life, but you gave me this mental image of balloons and letting go mm. and and releasing the negativities and that was one of the things that i did cool and it, you know i just okay that's gone just let it go you know mm. he is no longer entitled to the um title of dad yeah he is now father sperm donor good yeah. old uncle al and that's how i looked at it it's like yeah okay yeah. yeah so i didn't um beat myself up mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry also carrying on a second conversation <laughs> cool and i don't feel like i beat myself up either but i do i did struggle because you know i i don't want to get to the pearly gates and find out that i you know should have done this or should have done that or, or should have thought about it yeah. be true and, to yourself no no i'm sorry yeah. be true to yourself yeah. yeah yeah that's exactly the message yeah you've got to be number one in all the things and everybody around you has to understand that yeah you know whether it's your spouse, your children, your next door neighbor, your boss, your parents, your siblings. Yeah. You know? Your siblings. Yeah, really? Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so true. No, but I love you. you guys so much. Until you get to that point, though, I mean, it was it was uh it seemed like every time we dealt with them dealt with that it seemed to uh it seemed to be negative because of you know where we feel we were with that conversation until we let that go once we let that go then we were okay again you know but it's hard to let it go
you don't, I don't, I didn't want to let it go, but I, it wasn't my call. It was dad's. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Well, and I think for me, a lot of the things that, I mean, Barb, I'm sorry, you asked me a long, a while back about how I could, <clears throat> what put me in that mindset and i think it's actually an accumulation of a lot of things um desiderata i have to count that big i learned that in what grade seven for that christmas pageant that miss sassana was putting on mm. and it has been a big part of my daily mantra mm. it really has been you know I remember it it's hanging in your bedroom I remember it was special yeah I don't remember feeling that attachment but I remember your attachment and actually, honestly, I can't even repeat it. I can't recite it off my heart all the way through. Mm -hmm. Just just the pieces that, you know, just the, the <clears throat> go placidly amid noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. Oh, my God. And then <clears throat> yeah. be at peace with your God whatever you conceive him to be yeah that's another like oh my god um epiphany yeah and yeah. using those little pieces and of course you know listen to the dull and the ignorant ignorant for even they have their own story they too have <clears throat> the story yeah and of course the big chorus part is you know you are a child of the universe whether whether or not it is no clear. less than the trees and the, the stars. stars you have, you a, have right a right to, to be, be here. here and yeah. whether or not it is clear, it's clear to you, to you. Yeah, yes. No the universe, no doubt the is, universe unfolding is unfolding as, it, as should. it should. What poem is this? Desiderata. Desiderata. Yes. Aram. What was the, what was the, the author's name? I remember. I remember <clears throat> some of the uh, words that you guys were saying, but I don't. I don't recall the uh, poem off the top of my head. Yeah, there's a song too. Desperado. Nope. nope, Desiderata. Desiderata. Dial it up, Debbie. Read it on. Yeah. Debbie's going to read it for us. Okay. The title. Hen and the Lamb. What? <laughs> Can you spell that? Okay. D E S. What? D E S. D E S. D E S. Go ahead, Debbie. D E S I D E R A T A. Desiderata. 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 Yep. Okay. Go placidly amid the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. 
Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations and the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. And that was written by Max Ehrman, E-H-R-M-A-N-N, -N, in 1927. Uh, and you had that on your wall at what I, age? In what year? I still have it on my wall. <laughs> um, still got the wall? I have a poster Manila, it that Manila. <laughs> yeah, I had it on my wall in Manila. Um, I had it on my wall in Peterborough. Yeah, yeah. I put it back up on my wall in Peterborough yeah. when Greg was like three or four. <clears throat> and I've had it on my wall ever since. Um, but I learned that in grade seven from Miss Sassana. There was a, an, a record that somebody put out and I'm not sure who it was. It could have been um Go placidly in noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible without surrender be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others. Even the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons, they are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain and bitter. For always there'll be greater and lesser persons than yourself. You are a child, are a child of, the of the universe. No less you than the trees and the stars. You have, you have a right to be here. To be here. And, and whether or not it is clear to you. It is clear to you. No doubt the no universe doubt. is unfolding no as it should. Opera. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own. I don't career. remember the accent. However humble, it is but a real it. possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to the virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be Connery. yourself. Especially be no. Neither be Close. cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, <laughs> it is perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child, you are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Hey, it should be Therefore, amazing, right? be at peace okay. with God, what you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. 
with all its sham, drudgery and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be careful. Strive to be happy. Look on YouTube. This says the artist was Kamal, K A M A H L. That's who sang sang that song. Hmm. I, I thought I told you that that incident already, so I never really think about it much. Right. But but it almost killed. I was in the hospital for like three weeks. They were waking me up every two hours. Mm. My back would be hanging off the bed. And every two hours, like for two weeks. My back was bruised at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and But, you know, I suppose you have a choice. You can either let the, uh, let the fluid keep building up in your lungs. Yeah, it drowned you. Yeah, or put up with a few bruises, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It was a general bruising. It wasn't a bruise in one particular spot or anything. So just but... for context, tell Debbie, because she wasn't part of our text conversation. She doesn't yeah. really understand what the bruising is. So The the drumming on the back part. No, I do understand. Okay. Yeah. Um, Barb wasn't sure I was uh, oh. aware. Of, I wasn't sure what she was saying when... Uh, I said... Uh, no. I think I said, I think I, I, drum thing or I think I said, uh, uh, banging on your back, Nana, the Nana banging on your back thing. thing or something. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I referred to it and yeah. then I had to explain it because Rob wasn't sure what I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you weren't aware of what I was telling you about though either, right? No, no. Yeah. No, I just remember Nana doing it and yeah. then over the years I've done it for myself yeah so you hang upside down on your bed with your head on the floor if you can or on a pillow and put protector in front of you don't try this without protecting <laughs> yourself and don't do this in front of company but then you get somebody or do it yourself to bang onto your back while you're upside down with your head on the floor so you're on your bed with your hips and your legs on your bed and but the rest of you hanging off on your down. head on the floor like a 90 degree angle and then you bang on your back and if you have your mouth open you you eventually cough but even if you have your mouth open, it will drain. Your lungs will drain. It's the grossest thing ever. But wow, does it ever make a difference? Debbie? I grew up with bad lungs yeah. my entire life. Every winter, I remember spending two weeks in bed because I couldn't breathe. Bronchitis. Bronchitis. And I never had mom or Nana t turn me upside down so they could pound on my back. No. Never. Yeah, it's not for oh. that. What, it's Rob? For, it's for pneumonia. Yeah, it's for pneumonia, Dad. Yeah, it's I was in the for hospital for two weeks. I know, I was in the hospital for two weeks when I was five with pneumonia. I almost missed Christmas because right. I had pneumonia. Right. right. I don't remember anybody ever pounding on my back the way you guys are talking about. No, I don't know, Deb. Uh, no, I'm saying you two are talking like it's a like it's a family thing like that you thing. remember. And it's like I don't ever remember that. I yeah. I remember they did it. They did it to me when I had, um, when I when I had the hep reaction, whenever that happened. And I got jaundice. Yeah. What? That's pretty up. 
doing this thing. Yeah. You know what though, Barb? I I never uh, I never had to get that from Nana or Mom or or anybody as a kid. Never got from what? Sorry, what? The back to get the uh, chest clear and stuff. I never got that. So maybe I just got it. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm wondering. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But you don't either, Deb? No. That's yeah. what I was just saying. I my history of bad lungs and predisposition yeah. to getting pneumonia. Yeah. Like Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, you might have been the only one that had pneumonia at that time. Debbie was the one who had the bad lungs and pneumonia though. Yeah, but like, it, I, for Deb, it was mostly bronchitis. The, yeah. That was the first. Yeah. But I'm yeah. wondering. Yeah. But I also had pneumonia yes. when I was five. I right. was hospitalized for right. two weeks. Right. So was I, actually, at yeah. five. And they pulled me out of that iceberg. <laughs> Go on. Anyway, it's not about me. Go on. I remember being in an oxygen tent. Yeah. I hated it. Wow. I don't remember. I'm sure I didn't go to the hospital though. No, I don't think you did. My first hospital trip that I remember was for me was uh, I was 15 and I went in. No, I six. I went in to get my tonsils. <laughs> I remember and, that too. <laughs> and I remember they uh, sedated me and then sat me on the end of somebody's gurney and wheeled us both to the operating room. And I turned and looked at the person on the gurney. I think it was the first time I'd ever seen a black person because I thought like my brain started going sketchy at that point. And I thought I was looking at a film negative.